Hey guys, so welcome to the YouTube channel Let's Crack Neat PG, where you have the top educators, quality content, and you guys are assured a great learning experience. I'm your educator Chaitanya Mittal, and uh, I hope you guys have downloaded the Unacademy Learning app. There are some exciting offers going on with my referral code Chaitanya10, and you guys can utilize this referral code to take a subscription. At the end of this video, I'll be telling you more about the Unacademy program and what are the various batches and the offers that we are running. Okay, so we have an iconic subscription and we have a plus subscription and we have some great offers for both of them. So we have a 12 plus 2 on the plus subscription and also a 3 plus 1 offer. So let's first begin with today's topic and then at the end of today's video, I'll be telling you about all these offers and all about the Unacademy Pro. So this lecture, I'm going to tell you how to interpret an ECG in 8 simple basic steps. All right. So, interpreting an ECG, it's otherwise a complicated thing, okay. So, what we are going to do right now is we are going to interpret the ECG in eight basic steps, okay. But before watching this particular lecture, I want you to go and watch my lecture on ECG basics and leads, okay. So, you will find that lecture on the YouTube channel, Let's Crack Neat PG itself, okay. And there I have explained ECG in quite good detail, the basics, right. So what I told you there was that the ECG, it is equivalent to looking at your heart with 12 different cameras. All right. I told you that there were a few different cameras that were there looking at your heart. Okay. And all you had to be aware of was where to be looking at for what. Okay. But to understand this, it's so, so I told you that this was a CCTV, but for a simple person, it's very complicated. To analyze a lot of basic information based on so many different views so what we generally do in an ECG is at the base of an ECG we generally have something called as a rhythm strip we generally have something called as a rhythm strip so it is a continuous record of lead to ECG it is a continuous record from lead to ECG all right so that is the important thing to understand it's usually taken from lead to and it can help us monitor a few basic things okay it can help us monitor a uh, very few basic things that need to be monitored okay so that is going to be the role of the rhythm strip so first thing that we are going to look for since the name is the rhythm strip right so what is step one step one you have to determine the rhythm or the rate okay so determination of rhythm. so now there are two rhythms that are going on one is the atrial and one is the ventricular atrial and ventricular as you all know atrial depolarization it is indicated by p waves okay so if you see the distance between two p waves if you see the distance between two p waves it is going to give you an interval called as the pp interval am i right that's going to be an interval called as the pp interval okay so you will measure the pp interval and these intervals can be used to calculate the atrial rhythm Okay, if the PP intervals, they are at similar distances, that is called as a regular rhythm or otherwise it will be a irregular rhythm. Remember, this is the atrial rhythm. I'm not asking you to calculate RR interval. I'm asking you to calculate PP interval. Secondly, if you want to calculate the ventricular rhythm, you will go with the RR interval. Okay, you might have already heard of this. You will calculate the RR interval and once you are done calculating the RR intervals, you will be able to calculate the ventricular rhythm. I hope you remember how much seconds does one small box represent, all right? How much seconds does one small box represent? 0 0.04 seconds, right? So that is going to be helpful in your calculation of RR interval as well as PP interval, okay? And what if the R wave is not visible? What if there is an ECG where the R wave is not visible? In that case, you will go for a QQ interval. In that case, you will go for a QQ interval if the RR interval is, let's say the R wave is not present in the ECG. Okay. And again, you should be sure that the intervals are at regular distances. Okay. So it's not that you see any RR interval. Just make sure that they're at almost regular distances, right? So you can basically uh, easily calculate this. And then when you have done that, you can see the regularity. You can see if is, is, it, is there some significant irregularity, right? Is there a pattern of the irregularity? Okay, there are two kinds of irregularities. Regularly irregular and irregularly irregular. Okay, so that is the thing to see. So here you are basically having a look at the rhythm. 
okay you are having a look at the rhythm second thing that you have to go for is the rate you have to go for is the rate rhythm and rate are different understand so rhythm basically means rhythm basically means that you are seeing is the heartbeat regular or is it irregular are the atria contracting at regular intervals or are they contracting at irregular intervals if they are contracting at irregular intervals is there a pattern is there a pattern to that irregularity right or is that also irregular is that random okay so what is the meaning of this let's say two pp intervals i have compared and i can see that they are almost of the same duration then it will be regular let's say i am saying the pp interval or the rr interval in one wave i in between two waves i see it is let's say 0.4 then i say it's 0.5 then i say it's 0.6 and then it is again 0.4 then again 0.5 again 0.6 in this case there is a regularly irregular pattern this is a regularly irregular pattern and an irregularly irregular pattern would mean that it is 0.4 then it is 0.7 then it is 0.3 there is no there is no fixed sequence to its rhythm all right next after rhythm i told you step 2 is calculation of rate step 2 is calculation of rate so you know how to calculate the rate it's basically the same thing you are going to have a look at the intervals and then you are going to determine the heart rate you are going to determine the heart rate all right so there are various methods that you can use but uh, i hope you are able to calculate the heart rate that's fairly simple and we've also discussed it in the lecture on uh, the basics of ecg the third thing is to evaluate the various waves evaluate the various waves so first you first up you are going to evaluate the p wave first up you are going to evaluate the p wave the p wave the p wave first of all very important to note down in your mind is that is the p wave present is the p wave present second thing do all the p waves have a normal configuration like p waves are supposed to be like this okay slightly rounded and uh, with with smaller amplitudes as compared to the qrs complex so do all of them they have normal configurations and then you will compare individual p waves do all of them look the same do all of them have a similar size similar shape right and the most important thing to check is that what is the ratio of p waves to the qrs complexes is there one p wave for every qrs complex is the atria and the ventricle having the same sort of a rhythm okay is there one p wave for every qrs complex that's going to be very important and i have taught you heart blocks uh if you have an understanding of heart blocks you will understand why the ratio of p waves to qrs complexes is important okay after p you will move to the next thing and the next thing that you will evaluate will not be the q wave before that there is something called as the pr interval there is something called as the pr interval so next go for the evaluation of pr interval have a look at the pr interval so to measure the pr interval you will count the small squares between the start of the p wave and the start of the qrs complex remember it starts at the start of the p wave not at the end of p wave so you will have to count from the start of the p wave to the start of the qrs complex and then you can multiply it by 0.04 is the duration normal first question so there are two questions that you have to ask first so once you've calculated the pr interval first question is it approximately 0.12 seconds to 0.20 seconds i told you it is usually between 3 to 5 small squares second thing is the pr interval constant is the pr interval constant because in some heart blocks what happens is the pr interval it gradually increases okay there might be some differences in the pr interval of multiple waves or multiple pr intervals may be different so you have to make sure of two things that is the pr interval in the normal range and second is the pr interval constant throughout the rhythm strip okay that's about the analysis of the pr interval step 5 step 5 you will determine the duration of the qrs complex so i've told you of two concepts there is a narrow qrs complex and there is a wide qrs complex qrs complex all right so qrs complex it indicates the extent of ventricular depolarization okay so you have to measure from the start of the q wave to the end of the s wave okay not just till the peak hai na aisa mat karna ki sirf r tak measure kar lo you have to include q r and s okay so to calculate the duration you have to again count the number of small squares and multiply it with 0.04 the normal duration will be somewhat 
less than point uh, one second, right? It will be somewhat less than point one seconds. It will be somewhere between point zero six to point one seconds. Then obviously, again, you have to check if all QRS complexes they are of the same size, they're of the same shape. Okay. And as we have discussed in the P wave, you have to see that how many QRS complexes are there for every P wave. If a QRS complex is larger than this, if a QRS complex is wide, okay, that will indicate a pathology. That will indicate a pathology. If it's too narrow, also, if it's less than 0.6, that is also going to be a pathology. In general, in clinical medicine, we say that we have encountered a wide QRS complex only if the QRS complex is larger than 0.12 seconds right that is 120 milliseconds that's taken as the uh, maximum permissible sort of duration for a qrs complex okay now after qrs what will you look for you will look for t waves you will look for t waves so first thing you have to always check are t waves present are all of them similar all of them do they have the same shape do all of them have the same amplitude all right and is that amplitude normal okay so you have to check for uh, step six is evaluate T waves. So while evaluating T waves, I told you basic steps are first check if they are present or not. If they are similar across the rhythm strip or not, then check if they are after the T wave, right? Uh, sorry, after the QRS complex and also check that if the QRS complex is like this, the T wave is also in the same orientation. Okay, the T waves, they are not inverted. Okay, please check if the T waves have the same orientation as the QRS complexes, they are not inverted. And you can also have a look at their amplitudes. Okay, next you are going to be measuring uh, the QT interval. Next you are going to be measuring the QT interval. That is from the beginning of the QRS complex till the end of the T wave. From the beginning of the QRS complex till the end of the T wave. Next thing that you have to do is the QT interval. Okay. So while measuring the QT interval, you should know about a formula that we discussed called as the Bazet's formula, right? And what was Bazet's formula? That there is a correction for the QT interval based on the heart rate that is equal to QT divided by RR interval in seconds, under root of RR intervals in seconds. So you will measure from the beginning of the Q wave till the end of the, till the end of the T wave, the beginning of the QRS complex till the end of the T wave. Okay. Okay, so that's known as the Bazet's formula and this is the QT corrected interval and normal QT corrected interval is approximately less than 0.45 seconds. Okay, now why is QT interval important? So QT interval uh, corrected is normally less than 0.45 seconds and this is very important because there are some, there are some drugs that you would read in your pharmacology. Okay, I'm just introducing this uh, point here that there are some drugs that cause QT interval prolongation, that cause QT interval prolongation. And these drugs, they're very, very important. They're very frequently asked questions in pharmacology. And the arrhythmia associated to it is called as torsadis D pointis. There's a similar thing. There is a similar prolongation is called as torsadis D pointis. Okay. So you might encounter this word when you are doing pharmacology. Okay. So last step is to check for other things. Check for other things. This is a miscellaneous step. Hai. Okay, it's not very directed. The step 8 says that check for other findings in the rhythm strip. First, you have to check for ST segment. You have to check for ST segment. So you know ST segment, it can be depressed or it can be elevated. Okay, and both of those will indicate some sort of an injury to the myocardium. ST segment. Very, very important to check for ST segment. Then you can check for irregular heartbeats in between or irregular waves in between okay you can also look at u waves remember i told you about u waves so the presence of u waves can also indicate a lot of things uh very important for you is potassium balance right hypokalemia and hyperkalemia that can be indicated by the u wave okay so you can interpret the rhythm strip in these eight simple steps and then you can report your uh, findings you can report whether there is bradycardia whether there is tachycardia right can report the basic string uh, basic uh, things right so there are at the last i want to tell you about one simple thing that you might have heard very frequently that is called as the normal sinus rhythm okay so a lot of people are confused what is the meaning of normal sinus rhythm okay so we'll try to understand normal sinus rhythm
so here also there are a few characteristics for you to categorize a rhythm strip as a normal sinus rhythm first thing is that the rate should be uh, sorry the rhythm should be regular first of all it has to be regular second the rate should be normal okay there should not be a tachycardia or a bradycardia because then they are called as sinus tachycardia or sinus bradycardia then all the p waves then then the next step was related to p waves okay we did we did rhythm then rate then p waves for the p waves all the p waves they should be similar in size and the ratio of the p waves to the qrs complexes it should be 1 is to 1 should be 1 is to 1 and all the p waves they must be of the same size same shape okay then similarly for qrs complexes all qrs complexes they must have the same size and same shape that is another condition and lastly you should have normal pr intervals you should have normal intervals of normal pr intervals normal qt intervals right and you should also have normal p waves so all of these things if they are present they are going to make up what is called as normal sinus rhythm the meaning of normal sinus rhythm is it's evident the word sinus is used so that implies that the source of depolarization should be the sa node okay and since it's the normal rhythm the all of the characteristic features they are going to point to the fact that the conduction throughout the heart it is normal the conduction system throughout the heart it is normal okay so these are some things that you have to ensure in a normal sinus rhythm the atrial and ventricular rhythms should be normal the heart rate should lie between 60 to 100 right p waves they should have a normal shape okay and they should be upright p waves they should be upright okay that will indicate that there is a sinus impulse okay pr interval should be between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds qrs complex should be less than 0.12 seconds t wave should be having a normal shape the corrected qt interval should be less than 0.45 and there should not be any irregular heartbeats or anything like that so that was a uh, interpretation of clinical ecg for you in eight simple steps interpreting the uh, sinus uh, sorry interpreting the rhythm strip and identification of a normal sinus rhythm thank you so much guys for watching Right. So after that, I told you at the start that we have a lot of offers going on. So the first offer here is on the iconic subscription, where if you go for the three-year plan, you can get it for fifty eight thousand five hundred. The two-year plan is fifty thousand, and the one-year plan is forty thousand. Only and only with my referral code Chetanya ten. Please remember to use authentic plus referral codes. And if you take the subscription, you are not only getting access to an academy, but you are also going to get access to prep ladder. This is the meet PG iconic subscription. All right. Similarly, you can also go ahead and take the plus subscription, where you only get an academy. But there's a great offer there where you can avail a three plus one offer. That is, if you take the three month plan, you are going to get one month free of cost, and you can also get a well plus two offer in this. If you take it for one year, we are going to give you two months free of cost. We have recently also reduced a four year subscription. The logic behind that is, they go first year, me you are going to start with your preparation for second third, and at the end of the fourth year, you have to give the next examination. And as you know very recently, the next examination it is in the pipeline of being confirmed. We are still waiting an official uh, notification, right? So you have four years. so for we have introduced a four year subscription keeping all of this in mind and it's very decently priced if you go for the plus subscription at 60000 and i would say go for the iconic subscription so 75000 and you get not only an academy but you are also getting prep ladder and here if you use my referral code chatanya10 you will get a further 10% discount on this and that is going to bring your price further down all right we have amazing batches on an academy we started batches for your prof exams also not just neat pg if you want to prepare for your first prof second prof third prof right even for your final prof we have started with batches Besides that, we have started integrated clinical batches based on MCQs, dual educator sessions where we will have integrated sessions, for example, pathology, radiology, and other sessions where you will see that we are going to integrate the subjects, and that is again in accordance with the latest pattern of the next examination that is going to be there for you guys. For the NEET PG, we have a high yield revision batch which is recently started on 30th June, and uh, we have started a batch, uh, another batch for NEET PG on 30th of June. We have batches going on for FMG, INICT, next examination, and we have an MCQ question bank of over. 34000 mcqs for you guys to practice so what are you waiting for just go ahead and download the unacademy learning application and kick start your preparation here right and if you do that if you do that you have another advantage that when you are taking the plus subscription in the plus subscription with the plus subscription the advantage is you are not only getting access to all the offers but we are going to give you live classroom courses which will feel like you're just running a continuous batch regular testing in the form of weekly tests and special tests you will get access to structured courses unlimited access to live and recorded classes we have an ask a doubt feature and you get access to all these features with my plus referral code that is chetanya10 
and that is just an academy plus and i would recommend you go for the iconic subscription where you are not only getting benefits of an academy plus but also for prep ladder where you get the recorded video lectures the updated question bank we have recently launched question bank 3.0 that is there in prep ladder and uh, you will also get handwritten notes here okay so this is the plus subscription that is everything that is there in an academy and this is the iconic subscription that means not just the best of an academy but also prep ladder okay so that is going to be included and uh, we have for the month of July, we are having a Med Mind Scholarship Test, which is on July 10th, 10th of July. It's going to be there at 8 p.m. on the Unacademy app. And you have to use my invite code, Chaitanya 10, for this particular scholarship test. And the topic here is slides from pathology. So this is especially useful for those for students who are in the second year or beyond that. And if you come first, you will get a free of cost one year plus subscription. Okay. If you come second to fourth, there's a 75% scholarship. For the 5th to 9th ranks, there's a 50% scholarship. And for the 10th to 19th ranks, there's a 25% scholarship. So you can take advantage of the scholarship test that is there. And uh, we've launched a new feature for our Plus users that is called as Raise a Hand. So you can basically interact live in the class. You can ask your doubts by raising your hand. You can speak to the educators. And you can clear your doubts much more effectively. That is that is the best thing that is there right now in the Plus subscription. It's not interactive. No other application is going to give you such interactive learning with such quality educators. Okay. So we have a plus course and an iconic course. Like I told you, if you go for the four year plan and you apply my referral code, Chaitanya 10, you can get this in 54,000. And if you go with the iconic subscription, and again, if you apply my referral code here, the four year plan, you can get it for 67,500. So I think this is the best deal for all the students who are in the first year. And if you go ahead with the three year plan for plus, it is 45,000 for iconic, it is 58,500. Two year plan, 36,000 here. And here it is 50,000. And the one year plan, you will get two months extra and that, that will cost you 24,750. Here, the one year plan is for 40,500. If you want smaller plans, you can try out plus. And if you go ahead with the three month plan, you will get one month free of cost. And that is 11,000. Always here, remember to use my referral code, Chatanya 10. Okay. Kabhi kabhi kya hota that you are not using a referral code that is an educator referral code. And because of that, some of these offers, they are not applied. So please always remember to use the right referral code. And uh, that is also a way of telling me that you guys watch this video and that also inspired you to take a subscription. So thank you so much guys for watching. Uh, my name is Shatanya Mittal and my plus referral code is Shatanya 10. Please remember to hit the like button for this video. Do drop a comment as to what other videos you want. And if you specifically like, like some part of this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's crack me PG and hit the bell icon for notifications. You can also subscribe to our telegram. The telegram channel is t.me slash unacademy need PG Chatanya. Or you can also subscribe to our telegram channel. Uh, let's crack me PG and that is there in the description itself. Also, I would like to tell you about the bugs bounty program. We have introduced this starting from the month of July. So if you can point out any inappropriate content in the videos, right? Be very careful. Any inappropriate content in the videos, you can claim a price, right? And that is there. Uh, th there's a form in the description using which you can be doing this. And that is there to ensure that the quality of your education is controlled by you. So do keep that in mind while uh, watching the videos. So you can take advantage of this as well. Thank you so much guys.